This clamp is a new design that I just came up with, and I've gone to great lengths to design this out in SketchUp to the last detail before I got started. Now the material I'm going to be using for this particular clamp is some of my old Vinci's 2x4 over here. And I've already cut a piece that's an inch and a half tall and one inch thick. And this is the bar of the clamp. And what I need to do now is I need to cut shallow slots in it. And these are spaced one inch apart. And to do that, I'm going to use my big table saw sled. I'm going to make one cut first, the width of the blade, and then I'm going to widen that out a little bit. I'm going to be using a piece of 1 8 inch flat bar to fit in this slot, but I don't want it to fit too tight. I want it to slip in easily. So that's why I need a little bit of space there. To space the slots, I've put a pin in the base of my sled here, and that'll allow me to index that first cut that I made on that pin. I'll make a forward cut, and then I'll move it over against the other side of the cut and make a backwards cut to clean it out the same size as the original slot. And I'll do that all the way along to the other end of the bar. I've got all the slots cut. I had to stop a couple times to correct the cumulative error that can happen with a pin like this. Um, what happens when you use just that single point of the pin is the slot can get progressively wider as you move across. Not that that's a huge problem with something like this because the spacing of these slots here is not critical at all. One of the things I wanted to determine with this bill is to see how deep these slots actually need to be to grip onto the thing properly. And I've cut these fairly shallow, just a little bit more than 1 16th of an inch deep. The next step is to put the end on the clamp. That's the part that doesn't move. I've already indexed that first cut that I made on that pin. I'll make a forward cut and then I'll move it over against the other side of the cut and make a backwards cut to clean it out the same size as the original slot. And I'll do that all the way along to the other end of the bar. I've got all the slots cut. I had to stop a couple times to correct the cumulative error that can happen with a pin like this. Um, what happens when you use just that single point of the pin is the slot can get progressively wider as you move across. Not that that's a huge problem with something like this because the spacing of these slots here is not critical at all. One of the things I wanted to determine with this bill is to see how deep these slots actually need to be to grip onto the thing properly. And I've cut these fairly shallow, just a little bit more than 1 16th of an inch deep. The next step is to put the end on the clamp. That's the part that doesn't move. I've already cut a short piece that makes up the jaw. I just need to make the two pieces that hold that in place on the sides. And I'm gonna cut those from a bigger piece that I cut off the end of the bar. I've got one other piece to cut and that goes underneath the bar. And then I can glue everything together and fire in a few pins to hold it while the glue sets. And now that that hole is drilled, I can move my camera so I don't ruin it and cut it off with my grinder here. Now this plate is what locks into the slots that I already cut in the bar and it gets fastened to the back of this thing right here. And uh, Originally, I was going to recess this in, you know, mortise it in so it's nice and flush on the back and looks good. But for the sake of this build, I'm going to mount it on the surface like this. All right, continuing on, I uh, had to dig this out of the garbage, I guess you could say. Problem with making 
something out of this type of wood is that it looks like so many other scraps of wood I have laying around. I just took this and I threw it in the thing. So looked all over for it and I found it. And this gets attached to this piece right here in this kind of L shape. And my favorite glue for fastening parts like this would probably be, the strongest would be epoxy. My second favorite is polyurethane construction adhesive. Probably my least favorite is this stuff right here, which is regular wood glue, because it's not as strong on end grain, which this is, uh, glue joints. But I just want to get this it's not like I'm in a big hurry because I've been three days doing this already, <laughs> but I want to get this part glued up so that I can move on to the next step. And this would be the fastest setting glue of those three. Well, epoxy would dry a little bit faster, but then I'd have to mix it up and all that. And besides, I need to get lunch. So this is a good opportunity. I'll clamp this up and then I'll go in and get something to eat and I'll come right back out. Okay, I got a little bit of a confession to make. I didn't, actually we didn't have lunch. What I did was I took it in the clamp and I put it on the heater while I worked on uh, cleaning up this, first of all. And then I also recessed in that piece of steel that I made, thinking that, you know, why not? Looks better, looks more professional. Also works better, it won't shove up inside with the mortise there. It'll keep it straight too. To reinforce that fairly weak joint, I want to drive a screw that goes through this piece on the bottom here and up into this piece over here. But it has to be far enough ahead to avoid the bottom of this counter bore, and that's where the end of the uh, clamp is, or the lead screw, you could say. Uh, the other complication, though, is that the front of this part here has to be tapered up slightly after I put the screw in, so I'll have to counter bore a little bit before I put the screw in. Sounds complex, but it's actually very easy. And to do all this, I'm gonna put it in my vise. And I'll drill the 1 8 inch pilot hole first, and then I'll follow that up with a counter bore that's about a quarter inch deep. And then when that's done, I can drive the two inch screw in. Now, as for that bevel I was talking about, there's not a whole lot to it. Normally, I would take it over to my sander over there and sand that down to that, you know, taper. But there's too much junk over there for me to set the camera up. So I'm going to do it with the chisel here. I'm going to do it old school and just shave it down until it's there. And then I'll do a little bit of hand sanding on it to smooth it out. This taper here, this bevel, doesn't really need to be super accurate. It's just for clearance. Okay, so this piece goes in here like this, and the purpose of that taper, or that bevel, was so that when you adjust the clamp, you can tilt it forwards so that it's up out of the notch, and it will clear that piece of steel that sticks down, will clear the notches as it slides back and forth. I've got a corresponding uh, taper or bevel on the one that's on the bottom as well, except it's on the rear. So now that I have the two side pieces for that moving jaw cut out, I can assemble that. And I'm going to use regular wood glue again for this so that it will dry within a half an hour or so. Once again, I'm going to be using pins, just like I did with the bar, to hold these parts in place. It's the next day again, and uh, that makes it day four <laughs> on this relatively simple project. Uh, I did some extra stuff yesterday after I finished up, and I let this thing dry, the glue on this dry, 
uh, for several hours and then I came back out and I sanded it nice and smooth and clean and here you can see it looks pretty good I also unscrewed this thing here and after releasing the screw from it that glue joint immediately it wasn't even holding actually the regular glue so I re-glued it with epoxy because this part here this arrangement here has some stress on it quite a bit actually when you're clamping especially if what you're clamping is down here and the bar is pushing or the lead screw is pushing up here this part is, is meant to go forward so this has to be stronger and I may actually do something with this in the final build to make it stronger and I've been thinking about that probably put this together I don't know if making it there's no way to orient the wood ideally uh, to make it in one piece really you want the grain going vertical on this piece right here horizontal on this piece right here but this is that's you know this, this junction in here I could cut box joints into it and that would be strong enough so that's maybe a possibility so uh, onwards now since these clamps not this one specifically but the ones I'll make after it are meant to replace these ones I'm going to cut the parts out of this that I need and the only thing that I really need from this is this part right here this 3 8 inch threaded rod with the handle on it rather than make uh, this again I'll reuse this I to be honest once I replace these with the smaller easier to use ones I have no intention of even keeping these I'll recycle this piece of wood right here for something else but I can use this thing immediately so I'm going to cut that out of there and then that's just going to thread right into the piece that I've already built and then I'm going to slip the piece of wood that actually holds the clamping jaw in place on there before I put the nut in place as well. Now there are a few different ways to hold this nut onto the end of the thread rod but for this I'm just going to use epoxy and let that set for about 20 minutes before finishing the assembly on this. And finishing this is just a matter of getting a quarter inch washer into the hole of that L-shaped piece that's what the end of the lead screw will rub against or that nut and I also want to get a little bit of grease on the end of that nut in this case I'm using Vaseline to lubricate that so it doesn't wear out too quickly and then I can glue that L-shaped piece right onto that retaining plate I guess you could call it and let that dry Now I haven't tried it yet because I want the epoxy to dry a little bit more on the clamps but it seems to operate properly and I have no doubt that it will work of course it's just how much will this bar bend um, under load this is softwood however and it would be best to use a nice straight grain hardwood for this and that's what I'm going to be making the permanent ones out of I've got some ash that I'm going to make the bar with and then the rest of it I'm either going to make it from hard maple or I'm going to make it from cherry to make them look really hot and sexy. I've got one other thing to add to this and this is not it by the way but it's a good example. It's a pad that glues across the front here and the grain orientation is across like this so that any part that's sticking out past the side here will not break off easily and it'll give a nice clamping surface anyway that's it for this one I hope you enjoyed it what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish sanding a little bit and then I'm going to give it a coat of water-based polyurethane to keep this one looking good like I say I'm going to be building uh, more permanent ones from hardwood but I'm still going to keep this one and use it